Hey, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. What's the future of health? I am talking to the who's who of health tech and healthcare innovation here at Health 2022. And joining me right now, I have the co-founder and president of Komodo Health, Webb Sun. Webb, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me again, Jess. Oh my God, so excited to talk to you. Last time I talked to you, we were talking about the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative and the work that you guys are doing with them. And I want to get caught up on what's going on. I understand there are some big changes at Komodo. You guys are moving your business model a little bit and you're moving for more of an application-based approach to more of a platform play. So explain to me what exactly is going on there and give us some context about how you guys were working so we can fully understand for those who may not be familiar with Komodo, what Komodo does. Wonderful. So for starters, everything we do at Komodo Health is grounded in our mission to re reduce the global burden of disease. Now when we started the company, the belief was always a full stack approach was required in order to deliver important insights around patient costs and outcomes at scale. So if you think about it, the three high level um, levels of the stack are the healthcare map, mm -hmm. the platform, and workflow applications. Okay. Now we started with applications as the proof point around the fact that you could take this full stack approach and deliver robust insights to end customers that would get essentially the easy button around how do I consume this insight? What are the insights that I need? Well, in an effort to meet our customers where they're at, as so many new healthcare IT companies, as so many digital health companies, as so many large enterprise healthcare stakeholders are investing in their own internal data science capabilities, we wanted to meet them where they're at and allow them to benefit from the eight and a half years of investment we've made into our full stack approach. And so now in the same way that our application engineers were engaging our platform capabilities, that's the same way that we've now externalized that platform to third party developers so that they can be built on Komodo. And instead of making that trade off of do I invest in data, data capabilities, analytics infra, all of the architecture and kind of internal capabilities around it, I can just partner with Komodo, be built on Komodo, and benefit from their platform capabilities. Okay, connect the dots all the way through to the value for one of your customers then for us so that we can really understand what that means. Absolutely. If you think about large pharma enterprise as one example, historically they've been massively siloed. One team over here is buying some data. One team over there is buying some data. Each of these teams is respectively investing in data lakes, data warehouses, <laughs> internal consulting expertise to bring assets together, then consultants to analyze those assets. And we said, if we deploy the platform at scale at a company like Janssen, which has gone public in terms of their relationship with Komodo Health, what that can unlock is the ability for the enterprise to benefit from platform capabilities across all the different functions that are working on patient-focused initiatives, whether it be clinical development, where you have to identify and enroll patients earlier and faster in order to meet your filing timelines, all the way through to real-world evidence and health economics and outcomes research, where you need to be able to access a robust set of insights around patients for a specific disease category, and everything in between those two ends of the spectrum. Okay, this makes so much sense to me now. Thank you for unpacking that for us. All right, I want to ask about Big Pharma because I understand that there's that there's some thought leadership rhetoric coming out of Komodo that I'd like to check with you, that pharma needs to kick its consulting addiction. Webb, what does that mean? Well, <laughs> what I'll start are they addicted to? What, <laughs> let's start with that. What are they addicted to and why do they need to kick it? I'll start by saying the workflow for decades has been a workflow that my co-founder, Arif, and I benefited from years as consultants. Okay. And this workflow consists of waiting for your clients to buy a bunch of different data assets, then waiting for your clients to put it all in the warehouse, put it all in the data lake, then waiting for your clients to say, okay, this is what I'm going to make available to you, then waiting for your clients to say, these are the questions I need to answer because I either can't enroll fast enough or haven't figured out what the, you know, what the potential patients that could benefit from these new innovative therapies would be. And all of that is this laborious, time-consuming, expensive process where by the end of the project, your deliverable and your insights and your recommendations could already be out of date. Now, when we think about it, we said, by taking this full stack approach, what we can unlock is the ability for end customers to take highly predictable, highly repeatable questions mm -hmm. and methodologies and essentially address them through software. Okay. So I can configure a patient cohort for a given disease category and what are my clients trying to answer? They're trying to say, how many of them are there? Where do they present in the system? How do they flow through the system? Who is managing them? How are they being managed? These questions are massively predictable. And we said, we can take 
and we can operate at the intersection of data and software, and we can enable our end customers to answer all of these questions with the most up-to-date insights, the most up-to-date data, the most robust, robust understanding of that disease area, and have it at their fingertips. Cool. All right, that's cool. All right, bring this to life for us, really. Like, let's add some color to it. Tell me some customer stories. What's some, like, a couple cool things that are happening with some of the customers that you guys are working with right now? Happy to do it. One of our most exciting partnerships um, that we've gone public with as well with Applied VR. Okay, love them. <laughs> super innovative, super cool company. You know, they're they've been featured in the New York Times. Mm -hmm. They're reprogramming brains in order to um, better address chronic pain, right? Through partnership with Komodo, we're doing some incredibly innovative initiatives. The beginning starts with who are the patients that would benefit most from this kind of new therapeutic, you know, approach. And that's, that's the most simplistic use case where it's just core underlying technology that powers how many of these patients are there, how, who would benefit from Applied VR's offering, and how can we help them find those patients. Awesome. Now, more importantly, when you have the breadth, which is really coverage of the eligible patient population, when you have the depth, which is really an understanding of how those patients got to this diagnosis, what's happening to them after they receive the diagnosis or receive the treatment, the beautiful thing that we're doing with them is we're actually deploying synthetic control arms oh. because we know this is an area where we know what the patients look like and we can model out synthetic arms where we know what the patients look like and we can compare patients that are on applied VR's technology with control arms where you don't have to put someone on a placebo regimen. You can actually just see what happens to these patients naturally, longitudinally over time. Oh my God, I love that. I love the synthetic control arm. It's I love cool. it. No, it is really cool. And I think like as you start to think about, especially, I mean, not even, the, take the applied VR example, but I always think like, wow, if there's some sort of potentially life-saving drug and nobody has to be in the placebo group, everybody gets it. That's exactly That's it. just so, so wonderfully like beautiful, like in terms of, of the aspect of, of being able to do good healthcare. And the best part of that is the approach that we took in collaboration with Applied VR was accepted by the FDA. Awesome, wow, that's awesome, that's great. All right, last thing for you then, we'll wrap up with this. Maybe say a little bit about the future and where you guys are headed because I know um, Arif Nathu, co-founder and CEO, um, <laughs> kind of, you know, said a little stuff uh, a couple conferences ago, but it was at the end of last year, talking about potentially going public and then the market really changed. So where are you guys at now? I mean, I know that we have to wait for the market conditions probably to approve. So where are you guys at? You guys raised a lot of money. You have a great uh, set of investors behind you. So what's happening? Yeah, I would say one of the things we've always focused on is IPO readiness. Whether you go out, whether you go out as a company or not, you still have to run your business, right? You still have to know the right metrics to measure, and that's always what we've characterized as IPO readiness. Now, with respect to that specific question, the most important thing for us is one controlling what we can control. And so I can't control what public markets do or what public markets investors, you know, val uh, the value they assign to different uh, companies with different margin profiles. And so more importantly for us, we have the optionality given our balance sheet, given the strength of our balance sheet, given the strength of our operating model, given the strength of our business, and really the validation we've received in market from our customers, where we can go out when it makes sense for Komodo, we can go out when the public markets are ready to start embracing IPOs again. I love that. IPO readiness over at Komodo Health. How great is that? Okay. Well, when we're ready and we when say go, I need another interview. So, know, and I'm sure there'll be time in between that. that. I know. I'm sure there'll be time in between that. But Webb, thank you so much for stopping by. It's great to catch up with you and it's great to hear where the space is headed. I love that synthetic control arm data space. I think that that is just like, that opens up a whole new future for pharma Absolutely. and regulatory. And I think that that is just incredible. So great patient future ahead for, for the discovery of new therapeutics and things like that without doing as much um, doing as much work and, and requiring as much heavy lifting and the part of pharma and patients and, and regulators. I love it. Great. Thanks so much, Jess. Appreciate the time. Appreciate the opportunity uh, and the interest in Komodo. Absolutely. Well, thanks, love. All right. For more interviews with the who's who of health tech as they are changing the way that we do healthcare, head on over to my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash WTF Health. I'm Jessica DeMassa. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.